He was exceptional in everything, in poetry, in acting, on both the stage and in movies. His movies were very popular, and as a musician, he was just unrivaled. There's never been... Welcome to another episode of Modern Retro, where the old school meets the new school, and the new school meets the old school. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Modern Retro. As you can see, I'm flying solo today. My son Jacob, whom I do the show with, is at his mom's, so I decided to do a special episode today. So as many of you who've watched our channel know, uh, I have a Russian background, Russian heritage. And uh, what this channel is all about is the old school, the new school, introducing each other uh, to movies, to music, toys, games, everything you can think of. Because my son and I were always debating who had it better. Was it better when I was uh, a kid in the 80s and 90s, or is it better now? And we always compare, contrast things. So with quarantine, we had nothing to do. So we figured, hey, why not start a channel, right? So today, we're going to do a music reaction. Uh, I'm doing it solo, so I chose a very special song. Because another thing that we're trying to do on this channel is to not just entertain, not just to critique, uh, but to also maybe allow people to listen uh, to things, to see things, to hear things uh, that are new and to broaden their horizons, which is something I always try to do with Jacob. That's why you'll see on some of the videos, you know, he's already a big fan of Michael Jackson, Billy Joel, The Beatles, Biggie Smalls, he's seen Back to the Future, Star Wars, you know, I try to expose him to a lot of different things because it's important. So today we're going to be reacting to a Russian song. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, I don't speak Russian, I don't understand. But music is a universal language, in my opinion. And the song we're listening to today is by a man named Vladimir Vysotsky. Vladimir Vysotsky, it's so difficult to compare him to anybody in history. He was not only a unique musician, he was a poet, he was a Russian bard, he was an amazing actor uh, in both movies, he was brilliant on stage, um, his roles in uh, plays like Hamlet were revolutionary, and this was all during the height of Soviet Russia. So the songs he was writing, the poetry he was writing, uh, was not supportive of, uh, you know, the communist state. So he had a very difficult time. Even though his records were banned, um, they made it into the underground, and he had millions upon millions of fans. And the song that we're listening today is translated, uh, it's called Kony Privirietlivoye. So it's translated either loosely as capricious horses or fastidious horses. So why don't we listen to the song, and during the song I'll try to uh, obviously narrate what he's talking about and also give you some background on Vysotsky, who was beloved not only in Russia but all over the world. He was very popular in France. When he made a trip two years before he died in 1978 to America, he was immediately grabbed up by... 60 Minutes, Hollywood elites, uh, had him do concerts for him, Robert De Niro, Meryl Streep. Uh, he was even in talks with Warren Beatty uh, to get a role in the movie Reds, but unfortunately uh, he died before that could happen. So without further ado, let's listen to the song and go from there. It's <laughs> not so basically what he's saying, what's the what's interesting about this specific uh, performance, I chose a live performance that I've never seen before. So uh, in 1978, again, he visited America and he met a lot of uh, famous actors, again, Robert De Niro, Robin Williams, Meryl Streep, they, he did a concert for them. And uh, he heard that Warren Beatty was filming the movie Reds. Uh, well, not filming, it was still pre-production. So this specific videotape uh, was made by Vysotsky for Warren Beatty. Unfortunately, um, what I could find, the tape never actually made it to Warren Beatty, and it was not discovered until about 30 years after Vysotsky died, in around 2011 or 13. Uh, he died in 1980, and we'll get into that 
uh, some very interesting things happened at that point. Вдоль обрыва, понад пропастью, по самому, по краю, я коней. Now, right away, for anybody who hasn't heard Vysotsky sing, you might recognize him. Uh, they've used this specific song. It's probably his most famous song uh, in a lot of movies, including in the 1980s in uh, White Nights with uh, Mikhail Baryshnikov and Gregory Hines. Uh, recently, it was used uh, in the Tom Hardy movie. I forget the name of the movie, but it's where he plays a cage fighter. And when he's actually fighting uh, the Russian, uh, played by Kurt Angle from WWE, uh, Kurt Angle's entrance music in the movie is this song specifically. So for those who haven't heard him, you can obviously right away tell his voice is very, you know. <clears throat> uh, he actually had a throat condition and uh, it was very painful for him from what I've read and understand. But he refused to uh, actually have it fixed, uh, even though it was very painful for him because it would alter his voice. And his voice was just one of the most unique things about him. Very powerful voice, very unique voice. Туман глотаю, чую с гибельным восторгом. Пропадаю, пропадаю, чуть помедленнее кони, чуть помедленнее. So basically in the first verse, what Vysotsky's uh, song is about, it's about a man, and he always said that this song was uh, more based on, you know, folklore, you know, be a kind of, you know, olden tales. Uh, but a piece of background on Vysotsky is, unfortunately, like many musicians, uh, he had a major alcohol problem, major drug problem. So horses are the big metaphor in this uh, song. That's why it's called fastidious horses or capricious horses. Konyi privirietlivy. Uh, so he's talking about a man who's, you know, riding on his horses and he's begging them to slow down. Uh, and he's standing, he's saying on the edge of the precipice overlooking it, but his horses are taking him along and he's noticing that slowly he's dying. They're taking him to his death and he's saying the air is getting thinner and that, you know, he's swallowing, uh, you know, the fog. The hook of the song is him saying, slow down, you know, slow down my horses, you know, let me finish my verse. Um, so that's basically what we're at with the first verse of the song. So he's saying, you know, these horses are pulling him faster and faster, and he's telling him to please stop uh, because he hasn't had enough chance to live yet. He hasn't had enough chance to finish the song. Uh, but for whatever reason, he's got in these capricious horses who are not listening to him. And Vysotsky, uh, interestingly enough, in 1979, clinically died from a drug overdose. And he was brought back to life, I believe it was in the summer of 1979. To the day, one year later, on the same exact date, is when he died, finally, from a drug overdose. It was actually during the 1980 Soviet Olympics. And when he died, the Soviets didn't even report it. But slowly, of course, uh, news, of news of his death spread throughout Russia, and people, uh, there was a huge drop in the Olympic game attendance uh, the day uh, he was buried, actually. That's how respected, that's how loved he was. 
to the song, it's, you know, obviously a huge metaphor because Vysotsky at this point, he's two years away from dying. His health tremendously is failing at this point. And I think he feels, he knows that he's not meant long for this world. And that's why this song, which is beautifully written, it's difficult to translate. Uh, it sounds obviously much better in Russian. But it's such a personal song with a very deep meaning once you understand what the man's going through. He just, he's begging at this point to let him finish the song. And there, he's saying, uh, when he's saying, Pastayu na krayu, you know, he's saying, just let me stand on the edge for a little bit longer. He's accepting it, you understand? Uh, he's accepting that they're pulling them to his death, and he feels, you know, more and more the air is getting thinner. But just please, just give me a little bit more time, you know? <laughs> So this is this is the last verse. Um, so at this point, he's saying uh, we've made it in time to see God, um, and he's saying не бывает опоздание. So basically, that would translate as to you know you you can't come late. Okay, there's no such thing as arriving late for your meeting with God. Так что ж там ангелы поют такими злыми голосами или это колокольчик весь зашелся от рыданий или я кричу коням чтоб не несли так быстро за So He's saying, you know, we made it in time for our meeting with God, um, and you can't obviously be late for that. Uh, but then he's asking, but why are the angels, you know, so angry? They're singing with these angry voices. Or is it the bell that's filled overflowing with tears um, because of my horses? So, I mean, it's, it's so poetic. It's so beautiful. Uh, I'm not doing it, you know, justice because, again, a, you know, literal translations are very difficult. In Russian, it just sounds so much better and so much more emotional. But even that, I think, from the way he's singing it, even if you don't understand what he's saying, you could just feel the emotion, you could feel the energy, you could feel the pain. It's such a beautiful, beautiful song. Slower, my horse. He's, he's saying, I'm begging you, Umalayova scotch. You know, so, uh, you know, trot. Nilitet, don't fly. But and instead I got these capricious horses. Uh, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, live long enough. You know, I didn't make it. Так хотя бы допеть, и я коней напою, я куплет допою, хоть мгновенье еще постою на краю. So yeah, a very emotional song. 
Uh, that was a beautiful live performance. There, there are other live performances that are better, but I wanted to react to one that I haven't seen before because I've heard the song so many times. The studio version, I do not like. So eventually, after Vysotsky died, and uh, obviously Soviet Russia was getting uh, closer to, you know, 89, uh, the Berlin Wall fell. Then in the early 90s, obviously, you know, Soviet Russia fell, Gorbachev came in, then Yeltsin. So after his death, uh, they started lifting the bands uh, slowly but surely. And then eventually Vysotsky received all of the recognition that he did, didn't get in his life. There were buildings named after him, streets named after him, ceremonies. There's a museum now in Moscow dedicated to Vysotsky. Um, there's pilgrimages to his, um, to his burial site. There's statues erected, on and on and on. I mean, the man is still to this day, you know, 40 years after he passed away, is still beloved in Russia and one of the most talented people that Russia's ever produced. Again, not just that, you know, he was an actor who, you know, did, you know, some things on the side. He was exceptional in everything, in poetry, in acting, on both the stage and in movies. His movies were very popular, and as a musician, he was just unrivaled. There's never been, I mean, even somebody like, you know, Bob Dylan, I mean, he was just a folklore hero. I mean, Dylan was known because obviously he received backing and support. Um, but Vysotsky did all this with just nothing, with basically being tailed by the KGB 24-7. Uh, his concerts were all underground. Um, you know, they were basically like speakeasies almost uh, in America in the Prohibition era. era. In the 20s um, so if they were found they were immediately broken up and people were arrested so he gave only one official televised performance um, the year before he died I believe in 1979 uh, but again unfortunately he had major alcohol issues major drug issues suffered an overdose where clinically he was dead for several minutes uh, but his personal doctor revived him in the hotel room. And then, unfortunately, at the age of 42 in 1980, uh, he passed away from a drug overdose. Um, one year exactly to the date from uh, when he was clinically pronounced dead in 1979. But again, um, I highly recommend, you know, if you have time to definitely read up on him. Check out the 60 Minutes interview he did in 1978 when he came to America. And check out his music. I mean, his music, um, and there's plenty of translations on YouTube available in English or whatever language you speak. And his music is just amazing. Absolutely amazing. Absolutely beautiful. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope maybe, you know, a few people discover uh, somebody that they never heard of and gain an appreciation for him. Uh, and Jacob will be back here tomorrow, so no worries. We're not going to do any more solo shows. Uh, and we'll be doing some music reviews. We've received a lot of suggestions from our, our listeners, uh, commenters. So thank you very much. Uh, shout out to a few of our top commenters this week. Uh, Wonderkind, uh, Assignments, 3300, uh, Social Media, and my favorite, Atticus Finch. So thank you very much for your comments. We appreciate it so much. It means the world to us. It's giving us something to do during quarantine, and hopefully it's giving you a little bit of entertainment. So for Modern Retro Show, I'm Eddie. For Jacob, he's on assignment right now, but we'll be back with more episodes. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoy the video, post a comment below. Like, subscribe, means the world to us. I'm Eddie. This has been Modern Retro Show, and we'll see you next time. Oh,